Hello everyone. So I welcome you all for the course Engineering Metrology. So today's topic is on line standards and end standards and linear and angular measurements. So the contents are so recalling of the limits, fits, tolerances, and gauges. And then we will discuss the line standards and their characteristics and the end standards and their characteristics and what are the differences between the line standards and the end standards. And then we will discuss what is wavelength standard and what is its advantages and disadvantages. And then we will discuss linear measurements. In this, we will discuss vernier calipers and vernier height gaze. And then we will conclude with the this lecture. So, so we know what is metrology. <clears throat> so, metrology is the science of measurement, so which mainly deals with the measurement of um, uh, size, measurement of form and uh, position. So, metrology is mainly concerned with the, um, so it is the establishment of the uh, measurement of uh, establishment of the standards and also measuring methods and the metrology is also deals with the um, different kinds of uh, measuring instruments. So metrology is mainly used in uh, various applications like uh, <coughs> machine tool building, automobile engineering, biomedical engineering, space applications, building science, marine science, healthcare industries, military applications, in defense industries, nuclear industries, and the welding industries. So we use the metrology instruments for measurements. So in all the cases, so in most of the cases, so we adopt the uh, metrology, uh, we use the metrology instruments for the uh, measurement of the dimensions. In the second layer, <coughs> and also uh, we'll discuss the uh, what are the limits. So before uh, this, uh, we discussed the uh, what is accuracy and what is precision. So accuracy is the degree of agreement between the measured value and the true value. It's called the accuracy. And what is the precision? Precision means uh, it is the repeatability or reproducibility of the uh, manufacturing process. And then we'll discuss the, <clears throat> so what is the uh, accuracy of the, what is the relationship between the manufacturing accuracy and the cost? So the manufacturing accuracy, so this is the accuracy of the components produced by the manufacturing process. And this is the cost. So the relationship between the accuracy and the cost follows the exponential variation. As the accuracy is maximum, then cost of manufacturing is also maximum. When the accuracy is less, then the cost of manufacturing is also less. Okay, <clears throat> and then we'll discuss the uh, limits. So what is limit? So limit is the two extreme permissible sizes of a part. So between which the actual size is contained are called the limits. So the limits are uh, two, two types, upper limit and the lower limits. And also, so we discussed what are the reasons for the uh, size variation? Because the no two, no component, no two components can be manufactured to the exact size because there is some variation in the on the produced components so why this variation occurs these are the various reasons because of inaccuracy in the geometry uh, geometrical uh, uh, geometric uh, geometry of the machine tools uh, causes the uh, size variations and also deflection of the workpiece causes the inaccuracies in the size uh, size variation 
or inaccuracy on the components produced and uh, deflection of the tool also causes the uh, causes to produce the component with the uh, different sizes and the uh, tool wear also causes the size variation and uh, errors uh, due to location and fixtures also causes the variation in size of the components produced by the particular manufacturing process and uh, also clamping error causing the size variations and also slide away friction and uh, alignment errors so the axis of the workpiece and the axis of the tool must uh, be aligned otherwise there is a error in the alignment of the axis which causes the size variations and the structural deformation due to varying loads so there is a large compressive load acts on the column of the machine so which causes the uh, deflection of the uh, column deflection of the column so that causes the variation of the size of the components and also errors in the nc machine tools causes the variations uh, for a uh, variation on the size next and also we discussed the what is the uh, interchangeable manufacture okay so in the interchangeable manufacture this interchangeable manufacturing is used in the mass production so in this interchangeable manufacture the components are produced by the uh, different machines by the different operators at different locations and uh, in this in this case the uh, the components are selected randomly both the male part and the female part and then uh, the assembly is done so that is called the interchangeable manufacture so in this the manufacture of the components in bulk to the desired accuracy and at the same time adhering to the limits of accuracy specified is called the interchangeable manufacture and the next uh, next we will discuss the uh, we we'll discuss the selective assembly approach so in the selective assembly approach what we will do is the components of a mating pair are measured and grouped into several classes as they are manufactured so the final product is assembled by selecting the components of each pair from the appropriate bins to meet the required specifications as closely as possible and then uh, the no two components can be manufactured to the or no component is manufactured to the exact size so because of some variations in the manufacturing process so in order to uh, right the component may be produced uh, within the uh, limits of uh, within the upper and lower limits only so the difference between the upper and lower limits is termed as the permissive tolerance so tolerance is the difference between the uh, upper and lower limits of size is called the permissible tolerance and then uh, we discussed the different types of uh, tolerances so we have the unilateral tolerance bilateral tolerance compound tolerance and also the geometric tolerance and uh, we discussed the uh, terminology used for the limits and uh, fits so what is shaft the shaft refers not only to the diameter of a circular shaft so if, uh, it refers uh, any external dimension of a component similarly a hole uh, refers not only to the diameter of a circular hole so it refers to any internal dimension and the basic size is the size on which the dimensional uh, deviations are given and the tolerance is the difference between the maximum limit of size and the minimum limit of size and the allowance is the intentional difference between the uh, maximum metal limits of uh, the uh, compound two uh, components maximum metal limits of the uh, hole under the shaft and the deviation is nothing but the it is the difference between the limit of si uh, size of uh, size of the component and its uh, basic size and what is the upper and lower deviations upper deviation means it is the dif algebraic difference between the maximum limit of uh, size of a component and its uh, basic size 
and a lower deviation means it is the minimum size of a component and its the algebraic difference between the minimum size of a component and its basic size fundamental deviation means it is the minimum difference between the uh, size of the component and its basic size zero line represents the basic size of the component and what is fit so fit is the relationship that exists between the two mating parts of an assembly uh, let us uh, that is a hole under the shaft so with respect to the with respect to their uh, dimensional difference before uh, assembly is called the fit so these fits are different types so we have the clearance uh, fit transition fit and the interference uh, fit and we discussed uh, when do we use uh, clearance fit when uh, when uh, when the clearance fit uh, happens when the transition fit happens when the interference fit uh, happens and we discussed the uh, 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 differentiation between the allowance and the tolerance and then we discussed the, what is the whole basis system and what is the shaft basis system and their uh, differences so in the whole basis system whole size is kept constant whole size is kept constant and the uh, shaft size is varied so whole size is kept constant and uh, produced the different uh, for shaft sizes okay so that is called the uh, basis system so in this uh, whole size is kept constant and the uh, different shaft sizes are varied to get the desired type of fit in the shaft basis system shaft is kept uh, shaft size is kept constant and the whole sizes are varied and also we have seen why the whole basis system is employed uh, in the most of the industries compared to the shaft basis system and we solved some problems on tolerance allowance using the whole basis system and we also discussed the uh, iso system of limits and fits so in this we have the 18 grades of uh, uh, tolerance uh, grades from it01 uh, it0 and from it1 to it16 so to re realize the accuracy of the uh, products or components so here we have the two tolerance grades from it1 to it16 we have 16 tolerance grades so in total we have 18 tolerance grades to realize the required accuracy and then we discussed the taylor's principle uh, so taylor has given the uh, two uh, statements one is the go gaze uh, taylor's principle states that the go gauge is designed to check the maximum metal conditions so that is for the uh, hole it is a lower limit of the hole and for the shaft it is the high limit of the shaft similarly the not second statement gives the not go gauge is designed to check the minimum metal conditions that is for the hole it is the high limit of the hole and uh, uh, shaft it is a low limit of the shaft so let us if we consider the this is the hole and this is the tolerance okay here we will get the minimum metal and here we will get the maximum metal so lower limit is uh, is the maximum metal condition and the high limit of the high limit of the hole is the minimum is the minimum metal condition similarly for the shaft for the shaft maximum metal condition is maximum metal condition is high limit high limit of the shaft and here there is a minimum metal condition that is low limit of the shaft there is a high limit of the hole okay 
next next we discuss the limit gauges that is a, a plain plug gauges we discuss and then a progressive type plug gauges we discuss the ring gauge and then different types of snap gauges we discuss and also we have seen what are the materials used for the gauges so like high carbon steels are used mild steels are used and special wear resisting materials like hard chrome plated surfaces and tungsten carbide materials are used in war materials having low thermal because these are having low thermal expansion coefficient glass materials are used in war materials are used etc and then gauge tolerant gauge tolerance uh, also discussed so why we provide the gauge tolerance or gauge maker tolerance uh, similar to the work tolerance so we also provide the gauge tolerance because the gauges also cannot be manufactured to the exact size because of maybe the lack of uh, skills of the operator or, or the manu uh, defect in the manufacturing process or in the raw materials so the gauges also cannot be produced to the exact size so for that so we provide some allowance uh, to the gauge maker for manufacturing of the gauges so that is known as the gauge maker tolerance or gauge tolerance so for the limit gauges these are provided uh, one by tenth of the work tolerance for the inspection gauges it is five percentage of the work tolerance for the reference gauges or master gauges it is generally 10 percent of the gauge tolerance so these points you need to remember for solving the problems next coming to the present topic present topic is on so linear measurements linear measurements okay so our line uh, line standards are linear measurements so line measurements line measurements also called the line standards so line standards means uh, when the distance between the two engraved lines is used to measure the length it is called the line standard or line measurements if the measurement is made between the two engraved lines two engraved lines so this is the one line and this is the another line if we want to measure this distance between these two so this is called the uh, line standard so the examples for the line standards are one is the steel rule steel rule another one is the uh, measuring tape measuring tape so this two in, in this we have the uh, engraved lines engraved lines so the measurement we are uh, we are taking in between the two engraved lines two engraved lines that is called the line standards and also we can uh, another example is imperial standard yard is the another example for the uh, line measurement and also international prototype meter this is the meter is defined based on this meter okay so these are some of the examples for the uh, line standards or line measurements so we will recall what is the line standard or line measurement if the measurement is made between the two engraved lines for measuring the length it is called the line standard or line measurement examples are steel rule uh, measuring tape imperial standard or yard imperial standard yard and international prototype meter these are the examples for the line standards next we will see what are the characteristics of line standards the first characteristic is the measuring scales uh, when we use for the measurements so you can easily measure and quickly you can measure over a wide range of the dimensions that is the first one the second characteristic is even though the scales can be engraved accurately so it is not possible to take a full advantage of this accuracy because so if we consider the scale 
if we consider the scale, so the lines are uh, engraved on the scale. The engraved lines themselves possess some thickness. The engraved lines, engraved lines themselves possess some thickness. So this, uh, which makes it uh, very difficult to perform the measurements with the uh, high accuracy. That is the another characteristic. And the third characteristic is the markings on the scale are not subjected to wear, but uh, the leading ends, the leading ends may be subjected to wear, which causes the undersizing of the dimensions. And uh, fourth one is, these scales do not have a built-in datum. There is no built-in datum which makes the alignment of the scale with the axis of the measurement, uh, with the axis of the measurement difficult. It is very difficult, okay? So there is no built-in datum in the line standards. So it is very difficult to align the scale with the axis of the measurement. So that leads to the undersizing of the component. And uh, next one is the scales are subjected to parallax effect. So we cannot, uh, sometimes we cannot see uh, the dimension perpendicular to this uh, engraved lines. So thereby contributing to both the positive and the negative reading errors. And uh, so sometimes it will require a magnifying lens or microscope for close tolerance length measurement. So these are the characteristics of line standards. So what are the characteristics? So one is using the scales, we can quickly take the measurement and we can easily take the measurement over a wide range of uh, dimensions. And the second one is the engraved lines themselves possess some thickness so that makes uh, the measurement is very difficult to perform with the high accuracy. And then the third uh, one is scales are not, uh, the markings uh, are the engraved lines are not subjected to wear, but the ends, uh, leading ends are subjected to wear, which causes the undersizing of the components. The measurement may be undersized measurement. And then the scales do not have the uh, built-in datum so the axis of the workpiece and the axis of the workpiece, uh, the alignment of the scale to the axis of the workpiece is uh, very difficult. To, so that leads to the uh, undersizing of the components. And then uh, these scales are subjected to the parallax uh, error. So you may have both the positive and negative reading errors. And also sometimes we require a magnifying lens or microscope to have close tolerance length measurements. Coming to the end standards. So, so end standards are end measurements. So end standards are end measurements. It is the, if the measurement is made between the two flat parallel surfaces is considered, right? Then it is known as the end standard or end measurement. So when the distance between the two flat parallel surfaces is considered a measure of length, it is known as the end standard or end measurement. So in this case, the end faces of the end standards are hardened to reduce the wear because so when we use the end measurements uh, to inspect or to check the, or to measure the large volume of the component. So each component is, sub, is uh, contact with the uh, ends of the uh, instrument. So uh, it, uh, the wearing of the ends takes place. In order to avoid that, the ends are hardened and also they are lapped flat and parallel to very high degree of accuracy in order to provide the datum. The end standards are extensively used for precision measurements in uh, workshops and uh, laboratories. So what are the examples for the end measurements? Measurements using the slip gauges. So here we use 
uh, this is the datum and uh, here uh, we are using the slip gaze under the sign bar rollers and uh, here also slip gauges so here we can check we can use either for measuring the height of the workpiece or we can to check the parallelism of the workpiece with respect to this data and then uh, slip gauges also uh, used for uh, providing or me measuring some height or for piling up of some height to the required height with respect to the uh, uh, measure uh, right we can, uh, to the required height we can uh, pile up using the uh, slip gauges so with this uh, with the help of this uh, height you can measure what is the angle of the component and also there is a, there are end bars used for measuring the uh, measurements and there is a vernier uh, uh, ends of micrometer this uh, this is the uh, end one end of the micrometer this acts as the uh, datum this is the reference this acts as the datum and uh, we place the workpiece in between the two uh, 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 in between the annual and the spindle and uh, this is the reference point and then the spindle moves moves away right and then we'll get the reading so what is the uh, size of the component using the uh, micrometer annuals micrometer and then this is the vernier calipers so here also we have the uh, two jaws external jaws and we have the internal jaws so this has the fixed jaw and this is the mobile jaw okay so the workpiece is placed in between the in between the two jaws and then we will take the uh, measurement so in the on all the cases the measurement is made uh, by placing the workpiece between the two jaws so measurement is made uh, between the two parallel surfaces then it is called the end standards or end measurements and what are the characteristics of the end standards or end measurements so these uh, measurements are uh, these standards are highly accurate and ideal for making a close tolerance measurement and uh, but only we can measure only one dimension at a time thereby so it requires more time for uh, uh, measuring the large number of components so the measuring phases or ends are also subjected to wear because each and every component is contacting with the uh, measuring surface uh, ends of the uh, Uh, ends of the uh, end standard so the uh, end ends of the end standard are subjected to wearing wear and then there the power this they possess the built in datum because their measuring faces are flat and parallel and they can be positively located on a datum surface suppose if we use the slip gauges uh, for measuring the uh, required height or for piling up of the required size if a faulty ringing of this uh, slip gauges leads to the inaccuracies in the results there is another characteristic and the end standards are not subjected to parallax error so here we need not to uh, see the uh, dimension uh, see, uh, see whether the ends of the uh, surfaces are contact or not okay this uh, thing uh, we can observe by feeling the uh uh instrument uh, with the hand so by feeling of the operator feel of the operator so let us so here there is a uh, there is a micrometer micrometer okay here we have the thimble so by rotating the thimble the spindle will move the spindle will move so this is the annual and in between we are placing the work so if you rotate the spindle you can feel that the spindle is uh, uh, contacting the workpiece so we need not no, there is no 
parallax error. And uh, dimensional tolerance uh, we can uh, maintain or obtain as uh, 0.005 in the using the end standards. And what is the difference between the line standard and the end standard? As we have uh, discussed in the previous slides, now we can see uh, from the principle of a measurement point of view, so the line standard uh, is the dist uh, the uh, if the, if the distance is between the two engraved lines is used as the measurement of length, it is called the line standards. If the measurement is made between the two flat parallel surfaces uh, is used as the measurement of length, then it is called the end standard. And the accuracy of measurement, the accuracy is less in the line standard, whereas the accuracy is more in the end standards. It is up to 0 0.005 mm. And alignment, coming to the alignment, so here the alignment is the problem with the line standard. Cannot be easily aligned with the axis of the measurement using the line standard. So whereas in the end standards, it can be easily aligned with the axis of the measurement. And the time of measurement. So line standards are very easy and you can quickly take the measurement. Whereas in the end standards, uh, it takes a lot, it takes more time compared to line standards. And the errors, errors, if there is a parallax error uh, in the line standard, uh, but in the end standard, uh, improper ringing of slip gauges may induce some errors. And uh, change in laboratory temperature may also lead to some errors. Coming to the skill, these uh, line standards can be used by semi skilled workers. Uh, to do the measurement. Whereas in the end standard, uh, highly skilled workers are required for operating the uh, end standards. And the manufacturing process is also very simple for the line standards. Uh, for end standards, it is uh, very complex. And the cost of the equipment is also very low for the line standards. And uh, manufacturing cost is also, uh, cost of the equipment is also high for the end standards. So what are the examples for the line standards? So one is the uh, steel rule, uh, steel rule and a measuring tape. For the end bar, uh, end standards, it is end bars, uh, slip gauges, micrometers, vernier calipers, so vernier height gauges, all these comes under end standards. Next, coming to the uh, wavelength standard. So wavelength standard works on the principle of uh, principle of interferometry. So in this, the monochromatic light source is used uh, uh, because it is a natural, naturally natural, and it is an invariable unit of length. So the dependency of the working standard on the physical standard uh, can be eliminated. The second one is. Uh, according to this uh, standard, we can define the meter as 1650763.73 times wavelength of the red orange radiation of krypton 86 atom in vacuum is called the meter according to this standard. So this standard can be reproduced with an accuracy of uh, 1 part in uh, 10 power uh, 9 and it can be easily accessible to any laboratory. But the modern meter was defined in the seven, uh, in the seventeenth general conference of weights and measures held in uh, October of 1983. So according to this, the meter is defined as the it is the distance traveled by the light in vacuum uh, during the time interval of one by two double nine seven nine two four five eight uh, of a, a second. That is called the meter. So this uh, uh, standard is uh, technologically more accurate and uh, feasible compared to the uh, Krypton 86 atom in a vacuum. And what are the advantages and uh, disadvantages of wavelength standards? The first advantage is, let us if we compare with the uh, line standards and end standards. So they are, they are material standards. They are uh, made of material, some material. So they are, uh, uh, they have some thermal expansion coefficients. So when the temperature changes or environmental condition changes, the dimensions of the uh, uh, in, uh, standards uh, will change. 
So whereas in the case of wavelength standards, so as we are using the light source, so there is no effect of environmental conditions and no fear of being destroyed. So this light source cannot be destroyed by any person or in a, by any means. Whereas in the line standards or end, major end standards, they can be destroyed by uh, anyone or uh, by any by, by means of anything. So here no wear and tear of the uh, light source takes place. But uh, when we use the end standards, uh, wearing of the uh, line standards or end standards subjected to wear and tear. And we can easily reproducible as it is a light source. So it need not be preserved or stored. But whereas uh, the line standards or end standards, you need to be preserved at uh, some st some uh, required temperatures. Uh, the not subjected to wear and tear, and uh, there is no parallax error also in the wavelength standards. And they can easily transferable to other standards such as meter or yard. And uh, used for making comparative measurements. But the disadvantages are so you need a trained person to operate the. Uh, wavelength standards and uh, initial investment is also very high. Coming to the linear measurements. So here the measuring instruments are designed either for uh, linear measurements using the steel rule or for end measurements in order to measure the distance between the two surfaces uh, using an instrument like uh, screw gauge, vernier calibers or micrometer, etc. So both vernier calibers and vernier micrometer are the are widely used for measuring the uh, linear dimensions uh, used in the either machine shops and uh, tool rooms. So calipers and uh, dividers, these are also uh, uh, the uh, most of the students uh, will be used uh, already, uh, sorry, uh, calipers and uh, dividers uh, may be uh, used in the lower classes uh, right, for uh, transferring of the dimensions. Uh, basically, these uh, calipers and the dividers are called uh, dimension transfer instruments. You see this, uh, uh, this is uh, outside uh, spring caliber, this is inside spring caliber, and this is the divider, and uh, this is the odd leg uh, caliper. So, so this is uh, used uh, for uh, transferring of the dimension. Suppose uh, you, in order to check uh, whether the component is uh, produced to let us say 30 mm diameter, right? So we have to take the length on the uh, caliper uh, with the 30 mm diameter on the scale, and then you have to check the check the uh, diameter of uh, 30 mm. If it is not, then again you have to do some operation to get the 30 mm diameter. So it is only dimension transfer instrument. Next, uh, vernier calipers. So vernier caliper is a precision instrument that can be used to measure uh, both the internal and external distances or dimensions extremely, uh, extremely accurately. So here the vernier calipers consists of the uh, two uh, main parts. So one is the L-shaped uh, L-shaped frame and uh, there is a vernier scale. There is a vernier scale. These are the two main parts on the uh, vernier calipers. So here the vernier, uh, the L-shaped frame is fixed and uh, the, vernier, uh, the vernier scale uh, or vernier unit slides, slides on the uh, main scale. So that's why it is also called as a sliding caliper sliding caliper. So the main scale is graduated in millimeters up to least count of one mm. And the vernier also has engraved graduations. Vernier is also having a, a engraved graduations, which is either a forward vernier or backward vernier. So we discuss what is a forward vernier and a backward vernier. In the forward vernier scale, one vernier scale division value is lesser than one main scale division value is called the forward vernier. So let us you see here. So this is the uh, main scale. This is the, the main scale and this is the vernier scale. Okay. So here the vernier scale division is smaller than the main scale division. 
Vernier scale division value is lesser than the main scale division value. So let us observe this. This is the main scale and this is the Vernier scale. So Vernier scale division value is lesser than the main scale division value. That is called the forward Vernier. So whereas in the backward Vernier, so in this one main scale, uh, Vernier scale division value is greater than the main scale division value. So let us you see here. So this is the zero zero line and this is the Vernier scale and this is the main scale. Okay. And this is the main scale and this is the Vernier scale. So the Vernier scale division is larger or greater than the main scale division. So that is called the backward Vernier. So these Vernier scales are made uh, either by stainless steel materials or tool steel that depends upon the nature and uh, severity of the application. So these are the various uh, parts of the uh, Vernier calipers. So let us, these are the, uh, these two are the outside uh, jaws. So the one is the fixed jaw, another one is the movable jaw. So these two are used for measuring the external length of the component, external dimension of the component. Similarly, we have the uh, inside jaws. One is fixed inside jaw, another one is the movable inside jaw, which is used for measuring the uh, in, internal uh, dimension of the component. Internal dimension of the, here the component may be placed here, right? And we can measure what is the internal dimension of the component. And uh, this is the depth probe, which is used for measuring the depth of the either slot or recess or grooves. And this is the main scale. This is the main scale uh, given in um, centimeters and uh, millimeters. And this is also main scale given in millimeter uh, inches, uh, right? Inches. And uh, this is the vernier scale. This is the vernier scale uh, given in, uh, in divisions, that is centimeters or inches. Uh, top, top scale uh, represents the inches and the bottom scale represents the millimeters or centimeters. And there is a retainer. This is the retainer used to block or release a mobile part, mobile uh, part. Uh, if you magnify this, you uh, will see this. This is the vernier scale in inches. This is the vernier scale in uh, uh, millimeters or centimeters. This is the uh, inch scale, main scale, and this is the main scale in millimeters and uh, or centimeters. So here, uh, uh, vernier caliper is a measuring tool for uh, taking inside and outside measurements, as already told. And uh, this uh, uh, instruments can be used for uh, measuring the dimensions uh, from either 0 to 100 or 0 to 125. That is the size of the vernier caliper. Uh, 0 to 150 range, 0 to 200 mm range. Uh, like that, uh, we have the varieties of uh, different kinds of uh, instruments, right? Uh, this is 0 to 100 mm means so it can measure maximum 0 to 100 mm, uh, 0 to 125 mm, like that. And the sensitivity of the instrument also varies. Uh, it may be 0 0.1, 0 0.05, 0 0.02 mm. That is called the least count of the instruments. So this is very important. The principle of vernier is based on the uh, based on this principle or the vernier calipers works. What is the principle is uh, the principle, the difference between the two scales or divisions, which are nearly equal, but the not uh, like for obtaining the small difference. So let us, if you see here, this is the main scale, the bottom lines represents the main scale, and this is the vernier scale. If you observe this, the vernier scale and the main scale are very close to each other, very close to each other. So this is, uh, this is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Last digit is 10. And uh, this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. This is the ninth division. Okay. So here the main scale division and the vernier scale division, they are very close, but there is a, but not quite alike. So this is a small difference, uh, right? 
enables uh, to enhance the accuracy of the measurements. This small difference is called the least count of the uh, vernier calipers. So, uh, vernier calipers can be used for uh, measuring the, uh, let us, outside measurement, outside measurement, here also you can see outside measurement, uh, measurement of the outside dimensions of the component, inside measurement, so inside of the, let us, uh, inside measurement, you can see here also, here also, and there is a step measurement, this is the step, so you can see what is the step height or, right, step measurement, we can use, and also we can use a depth measurement. We can use a depth measurement. Here also you can see, you can measure what is the depth of this uh, component. You can see what is the depth of this slot. Depth of this slot you can measure using the measuring probe. So yeah, this is another example where we can use uh, vernier calipers for uh, measuring the external dimensions or outside dimensions of the components. Similarly, you can measure what is the thickness of the components. What is the width of the component? We can measure using the vernier calipers. So this is the uh, uh, vernier calipers. This has a main scale and the vernier scale. And uh, there is a small difference between the main scale and the uh, vernier. Uh, there is a small difference between the main scale and the vernier scale. So this difference, uh, if we calculate, right, or if we are able to measure, then that gives the uh, least count of the instrument. So let us, if we see here, so let us, if we take this example, so here we have 10 divisions on the vernier scale and uh, is equal to nine main scale divisions. This ninth main scale division is equal to the 10th vernier scale division. Okay, and there is a nine main scale division, and there is a vernier scale division. So, how many divisions is equal to how many vernier scale divisions are equal to how many main scale divisions? There is a n vernier scale divisions is equal to n minus one main scale divisions. So, here n is equal to 10, that is vernier scale divisions, that is equal to nine main scale divisions. Nine main scale divisions, 10 vernier scale divisions. So this is n, this is n minus 1. Okay. So n vernier scale divisions is equal to n minus 1 main scale divisions. So what is one vernier scale division from this? n minus 1 by n main scale divisions. So the least count is the difference between the main scale division and the vernier scale division. So list count is equal to one MSD minus one VSD. MSD means main scale division. VSD means vernier scale division. Therefore, list count is equal to one MSD minus, you substitute one VSD is equal to N minus one by N MSD. So we will get list count is equal to this formula. So finally, we'll get one MSD by N. So one by N into one by N into MSD. What is one MSD? One main scale division is equal to one mm, right? So one MSD by n. So in order to get the total reading, so we'll use main scale reading plus a vernier count into list count. Vernier scale reading into list count of the instrument. So this vernier coincidence, right? When we see is the vernier coincidence. So for the particular measurement, so if you see here, there is a magnifying. So this uh, vernier scale and the main scale is uh, not coincide, and this vernier scale and this uh, main scale is not coincide. But uh, at a particular point, the main scale and the vernier scale uh, exactly coincides. That is called the vernier coincidence. So that we have to identify for uh, getting the total reading. So this vernier coincidence multiplied by this uh, list count, which gives the uh, vernier, uh, vernier uh, reading in millimeter, uh, in millimeters, right, or in centimeters. By adding this to the main scale, we'll get the total reading. So this uh, instrument is called the digital uh, vernier calipers, digital 
vernier calipers so dare you need not to uh, identify the vernier coincidence right uh, it uh, directly it gives the reading so this is so what is the list count list count is nothing but the smallest division on the main scale divided by total number of divisions on the vernier scale that is the list count so by using this instrument how do we calculate the total reading of the or uh, uh, how to take the dimensions of the component so let us this is the component this is the component so we want to measure this length we want to measure the uh, this uh, length of the component so now we place the component uh, now we place the component in between the two jaws one is the fixed jaw another one is the movable jaw so by adjusting the movable jaw we place the component in between the uh, two jaws now the this uh, how to take the how to measure this uh, length using the vernier calipers that is the uh, thing is thing is here so here we have the vernier scale this is the vernier scale and this is the main scale okay so here this zero line this zero vernier scale zero is is uh, at uh, uh, and also you can observe here we have the from 0 to 1 we have 10 divisions we have 10 divisions that means uh, here 5 and uh, here 5 total 10 divisions each division represents uh, 1 mm each division represents 1 mm that means uh, 0 to 1 we have 10 mm and 1 to 2 we have 20 mm 2 to 3 we have 30 mm right so here uh, we have 25 mm and this is 26 this is 27 and this is uh, 28 and this zero this zero is just crossing the 28 okay so we need to consider the main scale reading as 28 main scale reading as 28 so this is 28 okay and we need to uh, observe where the main scale uh, reading and vernier scale uh, reading coincidence so in order to find out that suppose this is uh, uh, 28 let us this is 29 okay suppose if the zero line is exactly at the middle if the zero of the vernier scale zero of the vernier scale is exactly at the middle this is zero so this is not zero this is the vernier scale this is the uh, vernier scale so let us this is uh, vernier scale and this is main scale this is 28 and this is the 29 suppose if the zero is at the exactly at the middle then uh, the vernier coincidence is uh, uh, vernier coincidence is uh, we have the total 50 divisions uh, we have the total 50 divisions from 0 to 50 because we have each uh, 0 to 1 we have five divisions and uh, right like that we have a total of nine and it is 10 last one is 10 so 10 into 5 total 50 divisions total 50 divisions so if it is exactly at the middle so the coincidence may be uh, 25th division 25th division so 25th division if it is very close to 28 if it is very close to 28 the coincidence lies in between 0 to 25 lies in between 0 to 25 if the uh, zero line is uh, very close to 29 then it is uh, 25 to Vernier coincidence is 25 to 50. In between, uh, you may find uh, the Vernier coincidence. So here, it is uh, uh, just across the uh, 28th line, right? 28th uh, division. So the main scale reading is 28. The remaining, for uh, the remaining extra 
distance is measured with the help of a vernier scale so this vernier coincidence if you observe here this 31st uh, 6 means so it is a 6 into 5 total 30 divisions uh, the next division that is a 31 division 31 division is is the vernier coincidence so the here the, the instrument uh, least count is how do you calculate the least count the smallest division on the main scale is 1 mm 1 mm so we have the total vernier scale divisions uh, 50 so 1 by 50 is 0.02 mm is the 0.02 mm is the least count so to get the total reading what we have to do we have to add up 28 is the main scale reading so main scale reading division main scale reading plus uh, then least count 0.02 into vernier coincidence or vernier scale reading in divisions 31 so by adding this uh, you will get the 28.62 mm is the total reading so in this way we can use the vernier scale for measurement of the either length or width or thickness or depth right or internal dimensions of the various components and this is the vernier height gauge so which is used for um, measuring the vertical dimension from the reference uh, ground so we have the so we have the vernier scale uh, vernier height gauge range uh, uh, 0 to 300 0 to 500 0 to 100 like that uh, the instruments are available with the least count 0.1 0.05 or 0.02 mm and the vernier height gauge consists of a graduated scale or, or bar is held in a vertical position by finely ground fixed base so this is the finely ground fixed base so in this we have the number of uh, uh, parts okay this is the fine uh, adjuster uh, for uh, main scale so this is the beam so on the beam the main scale is engraved and uh, the, this is the column within that column the beam will slide or a uh, slide to adjust the uh, main scale reading and the vernier scale coincidence or for setting the reference uh, this is the fine adjustment uh, device or screw this is the clamping uh, clamping screw used for clamping the vernier scale, scale at a desired position so this is the locking knot locking device and uh, this is the probe extension and uh, the, this is the vernier scale uh, we, are, we are also having uh, the magnifying glass to see the vernier coincidence and uh, this is the measuring face stylus uh, measuring face stylus uh, this is the fixing device this is fixing device this is the stylus uh, clamp uh, okay so this is the uh, measuring face measuring face so this uh, the here we use the surface plate so this acts as the datum so after uh, keeping the uh, vernier height gauge on the datum then you can check whether the zero of the vernier scale and the zero of the main scale is coincided coincided or not if not uh, we can use the fine adjustment of the uh, fine adjustment for the main scale right fine adjustment screw we uh, use for adjusting this uh, uh, zero with main scale and uh, vernier coincidence then we can use for measuring the either height of the uh, either uh, any component height of the any component okay this is the vernier uh, uh, electronic vernier height gauge uh, already uh, seen in the uh, first lecture of the uh, engineering metrology so uses of the height gauge what are the uses of the vernier height gauges so these height gauges are used in quality control applications and can perform uh, several types of uh, measurements 
So to measure the distance from the reference surface to a specific feature of a part, to verify that it meets the specifications under tolerances. To subscribe a part, to, to scribe, sorry, to scribe a part with accurate vertical dimensions or features from the datum plane, so that additional machining can be done. And to perform the 2D measurements of part features, also we use the height gauges. And to verify the center to center dimensions of the components, and to measure the flatness of the components, uh, measure the angles using the height gauges and uh, measure uh, straightness or squareness or perpendicularity of the uh, parts so we can use the height gauges. So this is the today's class. So in this class we discussed uh, what is the line standards and what is the end standard. So line standard means if the uh, diamond uh, yeah. If the distance uh, is measured between the two engraved lines uh, is a, uh, for the measurement of length, it is called the line standards. If the measurement is made between the two engraved lines, usually for measuring the length, it is called the line standard or line measurement. And when the distance between the two flat parallel surfaces is considered uh, a measure of the length, then it is known as the end standard or end measurements. And what is the principle of uh, vernier calipers? It is the difference between the two scales or divisions which are nearly equal but not quite alike for obtaining the small difference. So this small difference enables to enhance the accuracy of the measurements. And the vernier height gauge is used to measure the vertical dimension from the reference ground. So these are the uh, references uh, we used uh, for preparing this uh, lecture. Thank you.